I love Bob Ross. My childhood would not have been the same without him. But as an artist, I feel like I can't escape his palette. His choices in pigments have been influencing artists for 40 years. So buckle up, we're going in depth on the 13 most common paints on Bob Ross's palette. If you stick around, I'll give you some alternatives that are single pigment, light fast, and non-toxic. For a full analysis of what paints Ross used in what paintings, I highly recommend Connor Rothschild's website, the Bob Ross Virtual Art Gallery. First, we'll look at the 13 paint colors that, according to Rothschild's analysis, are the most frequently used in the joy of painting. We'll go in order of frequency, and first, I'll just identify what pigment or pigments were in those paints, according to David Myers, the author of Art is Creation, a definitive pigment and paint guide online. So I'll tell you what, let's have them run all the colors across the screen. Titanium white. Ross's is a blend of titanium white and zinc white. Midnight black is a mixture of alizarin crimson and phthalo green. If that's genuine alizarin crimson, it's PR83. Ross's Van Dyke brown seems to be a mix of ivory black with a dark brown iron oxide, maybe burnt umber. I'm guessing his cad yellow is a cad yellow medium. Yellow ochre, a hydrated iron oxide or earth pigment. Thalo cyanine blue green shade. The original 1983 formulation of bright red was a blend of two naphthol red pigments with a little Hansa yellow. Every brand has their own mix to simulate this historic fugitive pigment. Ross's seems to have been a blend of diarylide yellow, phthalo green, and an iron oxide brown. No cows were stuffed with mango leaves for this Indian yellow, which was just PY83. Iron oxides come in many shades, and this is just a darker version of burnt sienna. Good old Prussian blue, also known as iron blue, and phthalo cyanine green blue shade. I'm like half and half on this palette. Half of these pigments are great. Let's go over the seven that I think are good choices for your palette. So this is PY83. It's Bob Ross's Indian Yellow. Old Holland sells it as Scheveningen Yellow Deep for some reason. It's really amber, like school bus colored. And um, it's a solid pigment. It's light fast. It's non-toxic. Ross uses cadmium yellow. I do not. I prefer this non-toxic alternative, benzimidazolone yellow. I got this one from Kama Pigments, a great outfit up in Montreal. It's, it's actually my preferred primary yellow. But cadmium's fine, and a lot of people use it. Ross also uses a lot of yellow ochre. If you're doing a limited palette, a lower chroma painting, this is what you want to use. So it's, it's worth having. Plus, it's really cheap. All right, so here's the phthalo blue I have handy. It's actually sold as primary cyan. It's the same pigments that they put in your printer cartridge. It is an intensely staining pigment. It's basically, it's one of the... Prussian blue is a really wacky pigment with a lot of cool properties. It's not as chromatic. It's duller than phthalo, but I use it as kind of my dark primary. I don't subscribe to the idea that, you know, you like to darken a color, you mix it with its complement. There's just too many problems that arise out of that. I like to darken with really chromatic dark colors. Like phthalo blue, phthalo green is a super chromatic, super good mixer. A lot of bang for your buck with this pigment. Look at that crazy green. And then finally, titanium white. And in fact, this is a titanium zinc white, which is exactly what Bob Ross used. Now let's talk about the pigments on Bob Ross's palette that are questionable. Alizarin crimson is a garbage pigment. It's so prone to fading that it is actually used as a litmus test to gauge the fading of other pigments. These are all different quinacridones. They're all in the red-violet range. They all serve the purpose that alizarin crimson serves in a palette, but serves it better because they're all light fast. And some of them, like this one, are even more chromatic than alizarin crimson. Bob Ross's bright red was originally a problematic formulation of naphthol and Hansa pigments. Those types of pigments have been proven to be fugitive. They fade. Uh, with exposure to UV. So they actually reformulated Bob Ross's Bright Red recently using Pyrrole Red and Pyrrole Scarlet. Midnight Black is a chromatic black mixed from alizarin crimson and thalo green. There are other better options because, as we said, alizarin crimson is garbage. For example, I like to use Prussian Blue and Maroon Perline. These cancel out to an inky, delicious black. Sap green is all about being yellowish green, low in chroma, and transparent. You can get there by mixing these two guys, phthalo green and nicolazo yellow, both of these totally light, fast, great, dependable pigments, or I would suggest actually replacing the concept of sap green on your palette with something like 
PY129, which is the same hue as yellow, but reads green and mass tone. So it's great for vegetation. It's very versatile in mixes. And when you add it with white, it gets very yellowy and it's just gorgeous. So the last two colors are Bob Ross's browns. He uses Van Dyke brown and dark sienna. Those are both earth pigments. Uh, Van Dyke brown has black mixed in, so they're both very low chroma, meaning they're close to gray. So if you're using those browns to darken things or to neutralize mixtures, you're kind of sucking the color out of them a bit. So what I like to do instead is use very saturated dark browns. For example, PO48 or PBR25. They're both transparent. They're both chromatic for such a dark brown color. So they actually make much richer skin tones and shadows and things like that. 